Wollinga Park on the magnificent south coast of New South Wales for the 2021 Volkswagen World Championship Gold yeah. Buckle Camp Draft. Hosted here at Australia's best equestrian event facility, Glenn Morgan, my co-host for our live coverage of Australia's most prestigious and most anticipated camp draft of the year. It certainly is, Joe. We've waited two years for this event and, of course, 27 of Australia's leading competitors, men and women, compete this afternoon for in excess of $300,000 in total prize money. We started off with 450 horse and rider combinations and, as Glenn said, just 27 vying for first prize and $100,000 in prize money. Camp drafting is Australia's fastest growing horse sport. If you're unfamiliar with it, here's Mark Barton to take you through the rules. Well, I think firstly the sport of camp drafting is uniquely Australian. Back in the early mid-1900s, you had a lot of station owners and workers that come together they'd often have cattle on the road or they'd be working stock and I guess some um, egos come to play and station owners or managers would pitch their best stockman and horse and rider combination against one of the other properties and they would um, set up a rough course not dissimilar to what we do here today but with the idea of um, a group of people subjectively trying to work out who was the best horse and man combination and that was um, what has then evolved into a um, book of rules and a, um, a regulated sport that we now call Cantra. First of all, you've got what we call the camp yard. It's an opportunity for a good stock man or woman goes in and they actually pick that animal that they think is best to be able to show the judges what they can do with the animal. They bring it up to the front of the camp, show the ability to hold it away from the, uh, the balance of the herd. And when they feel they've shown that enough, they'll, uh, they'll call for the gate and uh, gate them will open and let those cattle and the horse will go out onto the main arena. We go around the first peg, today is the left hand, and we do a figure of eight pattern around our first two pegs. There is a coursework where once you've completed that first peg, there's two points. Uh, once you complete that second peg, there's another point. And the ability then to be able to actually then turn that beast back towards their judge through a gate where we've got two pegs to uh, symbolise a gate where you get a further point to make a course point to four. I'll then also give a um, score of horsemanship, which is a score out of 70 points, uh, which is a, a combination of the ability for the horse to actually read the cow, uh, rate a cow, uh, the, the pace that they're going, to be able to check and change without resistance, and obviously a tight, fast course gate gets maximum points. So whilst it does sound very difficult and hard to read for a newcomer, once you've watched a few runs, it becomes quite un understandable. The complexion of this year's final is interesting, Glenn. 27 horses and riders. Michael Hiscock was the winner of the semi-final, the top Victorian rider. We've got four female riders taking their place in the final this year and the usual big names. But interestingly, absent from this final is Pete Kimiski, the two-time winner of the event. Yes, yeah, certainly is. Peter did not make the cut here of the 27, but there's a lot of familiar names. Mark Buttsworth, three horses in the final. Troy Palmer also with three horses in the final. But I'm going to keep my eyes on the girls this year. Kimberly Salmon, isn't she such a competitive young rider? She's also in the competition. Felicity Burton and of course Julie Duff. Those girls will really nail it. Risk conditions here at Wollinga Park, our first rider in the camp. What an occasion it is, Glenn Morgan, for Wyatt Young from Tamworth, just 22 years old, one of the young guns of the sport. He certainly is. He's uh, won the Nutrient Classic. He's won many of the major competitions, in gold, including the Golden Gate at Walker. He was a winner out at Canamble. He's one of the very talented young rising stars in the equine uh, sport of camp drafting. And I can assure you with his first round score of 88.3, he'll be certainly looking to post a high 80, early 90 to, to set up the platform for the rest of the event. The three judges for the final, Dean Taylor, Trader Wilson and Ian Laurie. Well, you can see that he's opting to take that left-hand peg first and a hard-running Hereford steer, but uh, watch the skills now. The idea is to just check this little mare back, and he's certainly done so. Tighten up on that second. He's looking to gain some horsemanship points and uh, certainly self-navigate that uh, second peg. So far, Wyatt showing cool nerves on that first run. It's always hard when you're first out, but look at this, setting up to the gate. I said he was a star of the future, and look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Brings the crowd up as one. And that's, that's the experience of a 22-year-old man in, in Australia's fastest-growing camp draft sport. 
His motto as a rider, let the results speak for themselves. And he let his riding uh, do the talking there. That was a terrific opening round from young Wyatt there from Tamworth. Well, he certainly rode well above his age and experience. And uh, you can see that on the replay. He certainly had a hard run and steer, set that horse. And uh, once he got that first peg, the scores have come through officially. And uh, we'll have those numbers up very, very shortly. No doubt he would have scored well. The judges, of course, uh, here looking in the cutout for a controlled aggression and someone to have an expressive horse as well. And then the crossover of disciplines as well, Glenn, uh, from the cutting side of things here in the camp to outside the gates here in the arena. They really need to display great horsework. Certainly is. Now, we're going to be pretty quick here this afternoon. Mark Buttsworth from King of Roy. He qualified in the first round with a 90-point score. He's riding Pep's Double Ray, and uh, he's also uh, one of Australia's leading horsemen and, and competes in many disciplines. He qualified with three in this final this afternoon, and uh, I know there's a lot of people thinking it might be Mark Butsworth's year. Good run so far here, Glenji. The cattle are running well too. They certainly are. This horse is bred in the purple. He's a horse uh, by the, the famous cutting horse, Real D Ray Jewel. And of course, uh, Mark Butsworth. Look at that. Cool as a cucumber. All of these cattle belong to Terry Snow, uh, on whose property uh, this event is being hosted. Uh, they're using Hereford steers uh, this year. Important to get good cattle for these big finals. It certainly is. The scores are coming through now. We had a cutout score of 17.6. Course was four. Horsework was 62.33. And of course, gives him a grand total of 170. <laughs> Next rider in the camp, uh, the first of our female representatives in the final this year, Felicity Burton from Brimaroo in Queensland. Uh, she started out as a youngster, mustering and breaking in young horses, and camp drafting was a natural rite of passage for her. It certainly is. She's the first of four competitors, first of four lady competitors in this competition. She qualified in the opening round with 88.67 and uh, she's certainly be looking to build on a high 80s, early 90s if she's going to uh, consolidate at the top two or three placings here this afternoon. She's riding JRL Solar Ray here, uh, a very accomplished female rider, uh, Felicity. She's been a Warwick Gold Cup place getter uh, and was second in the Warwick Ladies Silver Cup and she's been a winner of the Nutrient Classic Challenge at Tamworth. Yeah, this little horse is by a roan stud called R.S. Chisholm, and he was one of the most athletic cutting horses that I ever saw. And uh, his progeny have gone so well in the sport of camp drafting. Uh, she's certainly uh, got a well-bred horse here in this one. Indeed it is. And uh, she's looking for the Queensland competitor to be our first female competitor to uh, set the numbers high in this competition. Heading towards the gate now, and she's missed it. Well, that's disappointing. We can hear that uh, judge's whip in the background. It signifies the uh, completed run under the judge's uh, content. And uh, that'd be a little bit disappointing. We'll have a camp score and a camp score only to come through for Felicity Burton. Disappointing outcome uh, for Felicity there, but really a great achievement just to make the final. It certainly was. It was a camp score of 21.67. We'll be back to see Tim Hollis do his stuff after this break. Hi, my name is uh, Eric Lowy. I'm a veterinary surgeon at Willinga Park. So I uh, graduated uh, in the Netherlands at the University of Utrecht in 1998. I saw some practice as a student at the end of my studies and the practice I uh, visited in the UK offered me a job and sort of when I graduated I went straight to the UK to practice which um, was sort of specialised in reproduction or stud medicine which sort of probably incorporates a bit more than just sort of looking at mares so we saw a lot of uh, mares, fowls, stallions and all their related problems. That practice had a reciprocal arrangement with the practice in Australia. So my passion is reproduction but 
I've sort of also uh, spent a lot of time sort of dealing with falls, fall related problems, if it is confirmation or internal medicine. So sort of the surgical aspects of that sort of we spend we, we sort of build a lot of expertise with as well. Uh, the last uh, number of seasons we already did a little bit of work for Willinga Park and uh, fortunately sort of we were successful in delivering the results Willinga Park was after. I think we've built up a sort of a great uh, reputation in Warwick in, in sort of getting mares which have been difficult or in the past sort of haven't been delivering for owners sort of the result they were after. So sort of through the years we've sort of really uh, built on that sort of success. We've managed to deliver to uh, all those clients. This year we uh, got quite a number of uh, mares from Relinga, but also from clients which had sort of very valuable mares which uh, Relinga invested in. I think we may be looking at uh, 15 or 16 mares. Some mares will go straight in fall, other mares will try to attempt to get one embryo from and as some mares will maybe try to get multiple embryos from. I've been fortunate enough to sort of visit a lot of places sort of all over the world and uh, I think what's happening here is on a level that very few people can imagine and we're feeling very uh, fortunate to uh, be part of this. Some say we've got engine oil in our veins. After all, it takes some rare skills to settle a wild wood. And those that visit this place, well, well, they're transformed. Almost as much as the V6 Amarok's. You've got to see it to believe it. The only ute reared for the road. Welcome back to our live coverage of the 2021 Volkswagen World Championship Gold Buckle Camp Draft. Coming to you from Wollinga Park on the south coast of New South Wales. Our fourth rider in the camp now and this is Tim Hollis from Carroll in New South Wales riding Adios Florence. Yeah, well here's a young man that's come through the sport of camp drafting. He's a second generation competitor. Of course he's had dad, dad Bruce. He's his father. And he's off and away in the arena here. A good start. Uh, nice cutout work there. We're going to get him round the first peg. And he's done that successfully. He certainly has. And uh, of course, he comes from a very, very famous family of camp drafters. His father, Bruce, was a world championship camp draft rider. His mother, Kerry, was also an Australian uh, lady camp draft riding competitor. They born and raised up in the uh, northwest of New South Wales. And I tell you what, there's only one way that Tim knows to ride, and that's with the throttle oh. down. So disappointing. Missed the gate. What a shame. It was looking like a terrific run for Tim. It certainly was. And this is the nature of the sport, uh, isn't it? You, you're working with very unpredictable beasts. Yeah, you certainly are, and that's why these people that compete in the sport are camp drafting like he's... He has got a score that's come through from our judges today. Uh, his previous round was 89 and of course, uh, he'll build on that throughout that round of the competition. Ali Mosley is our field reporter for this year's event, uh, and she's right there in the thick of things at the camp. How are things down there, uh, Ali? The atmosphere must be quite intense. 
Oh, Joe, it's absolutely incredible. And I've actually found the defending champ, Pete Comiskey, who missed out on this year's final but has already won this twice. And I think we'd like to know, Pete, who's your tip to take it out this year? Well, it's uh, always a pretty hard call here. At, um, I guess it comes down to, uh, yeah, who gets the best here. And, there's, um, and then he's got to have a good horse to train. And then, um, then of course, uh, have a bit of luck on the day too. So, uh, obviously, being a Queenslander, we've got uh, Mark Butsworth and we've got Stephen Comiskey, my brother. And, um, uh, yeah, so Susan Dynastis has some Queenslanders in the side. So, obviously, we'd love to see a Queenslander again take home the title. Absolutely, you would. Very proud Queenslander. I'm sure we've got our state of origin coming up after this. What's it like to win an event of this nature? Oh, it's just it's a it's a huge budge just to be part of it. Obviously, you know. But uh, no, I was very fortunate to win a couple of them. But um, but yeah, just to be here and what uh, the Snow family have done for the industry is amazing. Uh, the you know the cattle, one line of cattle have been fantastic, and um, hospitality surface. Um, yeah, it's been a, a huge event. You know following after a big heap of rain here and everything like that and it's just gone ahead and um, yeah no we've had a fantastic week and uh, competition's great until the last one goes out I mean in round three um, you know the last competitor Michael took out the, the round with the 91 last out so uh, no it can it's all it won't be over until the last competitor goes if that makes sense. Absolutely right thank you very much Pete. Pete Comiskey, they're sitting out the final this year uh, as we have a look at John Mulcahy now from Roma in Queensland uh, in his run, uh, about to hopefully get the beast through the gate, and he has successfully. Well, he'd be certainly happy with that. John uh, he represents Roma in southeast Queensland. He rides a horse that is uh, bred by that famous Acres Destiny horse, and, and the progeny of those horses there left an imprint in the camp dusting industry like no other sire has. They've got a beautiful nature, great temperament, and uh, that little horse looks the same. He's a very good-looking stallion, isn't he, Jess Anaka, uh, the horse uh, here ridden by John Mulcahy. Uh, a lovely run there, good score, which puts him into first position. 178 points with his aggregate, which is uh, certainly a good way to be at this point of time. OK, next rider in the camp uh, is one of our female representatives. In fact, it's Michael Hiscock on Newburn Tip Top. Yeah, this guy's from Mafra in uh, Victoria. Top scored in the opening round with 91 points. So this is the one that they're really sitting back to watch. Uh, there would be a little pressure on this, but boy, he looks like he selected an ideal steer. It's a smooth running beast. It's certainly uh, adapted to his horse and his conditions. And he's only just got to hope that this steer can run through fluently towards that gate. Just don't overpressure the steer. Now look at this, the eye, the expectations, it's on. Oh, with a 91 in the first round. That is certainly, Joe, going to be a, a pretty good score. I think the judges are going to like what they saw there. And they certainly like what they saw from him in the semi-final. He won that uh, on this horse, uh, Michael Hiscock, uh, who's a dairy farmer uh, from Victoria and a well-accomplished rider, uh, having won the 2013 edition of the Warwick Gold Cup on Hazelwood Advice. Yes, and his scores come through. The aggregate there, horsework today alone was 64, 181.33 over the two rounds. He becomes our new leader. And uh, believe it or not, the sire of that particular horse is called Top That. So there you go. That may be something that we uh, look towards trying to top that as the uh, event unfolds. 181 aggregate. Michael's tip for success at leading into the event, hard work. <laughs> <laughs> you bet. We're, uh, we're moving on to Dean Rogers, riding his uh, nomination, Archie. And uh, he qualified in the first round today with a score of 88.3 seconds in our semi-final. Wheeling round to the gate now, and boom, they go through. Great run. Oh, it certainly is. And and full credit to our cattle suppliers here, of course. Pat Cleary did an amazing job to select some 1,500 heritages in this particular competition. I know uh, people like Bruce Shea, Brett Petty from Murren Bateman over at the Hillview uh, property have done an amazing job to get these cattle settled. Dean comes through in this round with an aggregate overall score of 177. 177 is aggregate score in the competition. Horsework today was 62, fourth of course, and uh, that puts him prominently in about the top three positions at this stage. 
Okay, uh, Mark Buttsworth with the next of his horse representatives, the Grey Electric Duck. And unfortunately, uh, Mark there has been cracked off by the judges, Glenn. Yeah, well, unfortunately, but, uh, you know, Mark, Mark is a, a great ambassador of the sport of camp drafting. Or, you know, every equine discipline Mark has pretty much competed in, whether it be at the top level in cutting, camp drafting. And uh, I can assure you he is, you know, known throughout Australia as one of the greatest and most successful horsemen. He's known as the king of the cutouts, Mark Buttsworth, and has the discipline required for both cutting and the aggression for the Camp Draft Arena. A 2019 Warwick Gold Cup cutout uh, winner and won the Stallion Draft there in 2017. And a three-time winner of the Clon Curry Stockman's Challenge. Uh, he's one of the big names of the sport, uh, Mark Buttsworth. And he's currently ranked five on Pep's Double Ray with our leader at this stage, the semi-final winner, Michael Hiscock, who's really got his eye in on board Mewburn Tip Top. We'll be back with the continuation of the final after this. him, Gary. Another one sold on the Amarok V6. Hard not to be with three years free scheduled service in across the Amarok V6 range. Would you look at that grin? I hope he runs half petrol. It's diesel. Shut it. Get some Volkswagen end of financial year satisfaction with the Amarok V6 Auto from 49990 Drive Away. Why, it's nice. I'm Ash Ma. Whether it's cam drafting or cutting, there's an extreme amount of pressure on both horse and rider. But nothing compares to the pressure on your horse's joints. That's why I only trust and ride with Foresight Epitalis Fort. It's scientifically proven to provide unrivaled protection of your horse's joints, naturally, keeping Magical at the top of his game. That's why the elite in the equine industry, whether it be competitor or veterinarian, always choose Foresight Epitalis Fort. Hope you're enjoying our live coverage of Australia's most prestigious camp draft coming to you from Wollinga Park on the south coast of New South Wales. Australia's best horses and riders and bred cattle assembled here for a wonderful day of competition. Next in the camp we have Bruce McNaughton, a true legend of Australian camp drafting. Well, he certainly is, Joe, and, and this is the only father and son team that are competing in the final. His uh, son, Ben, also competing in this final uh, championship round. Bruce has uh, been at the top of his game, and I can assure you it's well over 40 years. He's a master horseman. He's developed and uh, trained so many 
Australian champion campcraft horses. He comes from a very, very good uh, equine background as far as uh, horsemanship goes. And I, with all of these years of experience, you can never underestimate the skills of uh, this man, Bruce McNaughton. And he gives a lot back to the sport too, doesn't he? Glenn uh, hosting many uh, clinics, trains numerous riders, and even has his own DVD on how to do camp drafting. Uh, today, not so much luck though out there in the arena. He's missed the gate, Bruce. Well, it's, it's certainly disappointing for Bruce, but he'll hold his head high. He knew he gave it his best shot today. The little horse that he rides, Little Acre, of course, by that uh, great start up there at Tamarang, uh, Acre's Destiny progeny once again, and uh, just short, fell short of that gate, but Bruce will bounce back, and, of course, his all eyes will be on yeah, his son, Ben, in this final coming up very, very shortly. No doubt he's had a big hand in mentoring. Next rider in the camp uh, is Michael Hayes, originally from central Queensland. Glenn now based out of Scone and today riding a horse called Jaguar. Yeah, that's right. We saw him uh, take out that great open camp drafting, the Barry Southern Memorial Draft at St George last year. And uh, he's relocated to the Hunter Valley, feels it's a, a better place to compete in uh, many major camp drafts. Unfortunately here today for Jaguar and uh, Michael Hayes, just not his day, things didn't cooperate, but uh, he'll certainly learn from the experience, his first time competing here at Willinga. As I mentioned earlier in the coverage, we've got three judges uh, here today and they'll all vary in their views on these runs, won't they, Glenn? Uh, because they're all looking at these horses and riders and cattle from different angles. Yeah, that's correct. And I think Mark Barton gave a, a great update on the uh, camp drafting rules and competitions, but uh, certainly the three judges, we get an aggregate score from those competitors. Next of our uh, competitors in the camp is Kimberly Salmon, one of the female riders uh, taking part in the final. There are four uh, lady riders uh, that have made the final this year. Glenn, uh, a terrific uh, achievement. Yes, yeah, certainly have, Julie Duff. Yeah, I think camp drafting is like a drug. Once you start, you, it, you just keep going. It's um, it's crazy. It's it is a beautiful sport. It's, I mean, one day we say that you can, you know, you can be hero to zero. Like it's, yeah, it's crazy. There is a little bit of luck to camp drafting. I think you know you got to get a good draw and the right cows got to run in. We've all put tough cattle around, but when you when you're up there in the winners circle, it's all got to come together. We like to laugh, and it is a good family sport. But when you're lined up at the side of the camp, yeah, it's pretty intense, and we're pretty competitive. We're all good mates, and we're, we are happy for each other. You know, when there's a winner, there's a winner. But mine and Troy's main issue this this year is trying not to beat off his perch. Like, yeah, it's, we're not even thinking of the hundred thousand. It's getting rid of him first. <laughs> he's the best. Oh, he is for sure. Yeah, he's won it twice, and I don't know that he get much better than Pete. Not that I want to let him know that, obviously. But yeah, no, he's he's a good sportsman. Oh, for sure. Yeah, these days it's the girls, I reckon, better than the boys. <laughs> Kimberly Salmon has been riding in great form over the past couple of days here at Wollinga Park. Uh, here she's aboard uh, the daughter of Seligman Spinner, sire having a lot of success in the camp drafting world over the past year. This is Juliet's Romeo. Uh, Kimberly Salmon, one of Australia's leading female camp draft riders. Yeah, Joe, she finaled here the last uh, two seasons, 2018, 2019. Uh, very cool, under pressure. She's a great horsewoman, and uh, we certainly wish her well here today. She certainly uh, competes at the highest level against the men. She's never, ever intimidated, and uh, she holds her head no matter where. Very, very high in the sport of camp drafting. She first competed in a camp draft at the tender age of just 12 and admits she was hooked every day after that. Oh, certainly, certainly. The sire of this horse was uh, Seligman Spin. It was uh, shown by Peter and Debbie Gessler from up around Bow Desert for many years. And gee, the progeny are doing well. And I said in the interview, the preview, that Kimberly would do well today. And she certainly hasn't let us down. Very popular run there. A great applause from the huge crowd in attendance for this final. Just over 2,000 people uh, here at this incredible facility with a new grandstand. Yeah, and the scores have just come through for Juliet's Romeo. 22.3 for cutout, 4 for course, 62 for horsework, 
a total aggregate score of 176.67. Uh, it's a great run from Kimberly Salmon, and that pushes her up to fourth placing. A terrific effort. It certainly is, and uh, we thought the girls would be very, very competitive here today, and uh, we're certainly seeing. There's the new stand I was referencing, uh, Glenn. Uh, quite jaw-dropping, aren't they? The facilities here. Well, it's a world's venue, world-class venue. Something you you wouldn't expect to see down here on the south coast. But Terry Snow and his great magnificent staff have just built built this venue specifically for camp drafting and you won't see it any better in Australia. And someone that's had a huge hand in the development of this facility is our next rider in the camp, Troy Palmer. He uh, still works as a consultant uh, here at Wollinga Park and one of Australia's top riders. Yeah, well, Troy is one of uh, two riders that had three horses qualify in this competition. This particular horse, Hells Are Coming, it's a, a, a very, very well-bred horse, has been on the uh, circuit for a long period of time. And of course, out of that fantastic uh, cutting horse called One Hell of a Spin, there was none better in the Australian cutting horse industry. And Troy Palmer's got to capitalise on the situation. He was 89 in the first round. And uh, this is not an overly big horse, but what it lacks in size, it's certainly very, very athletic. You can place it where you want to at top speed and uh, Troy is using all of his skills right at this point. And this horse is owned by Terry Snow, who owns this facility and is the mastermind of this event. And it's got the gate. Well, and that's that's great because Terry has put his entire life uh, in, into developing this camp drafting facility. He's invested so many dollars into the camp draft world with that particular horse. And, and to see Troy and, and that little horse get back to the final, something special for Terry here this weekend. And there's the score. Troy now sitting in fourth position on Hells Are Coming with a total score of 176.67. Yeah, that's correct. And, and certainly it puts him in the top four place gettings. 23 for cutout. And, and for a little horse like that, it really works well. It loves its job. And just look at the way that when that horse relaxes off the bit, beautiful snaffle, and, and that's how he, he winds back down. The expressions on the faces of onlookers there uh, say it all, don't they? Some of uh, the riders yet to uh, have their runs uh, really calibrating uh, on the sidelines there. Uh, watching the pen of cattle, uh, they start observing from that far out, don't they? Ali Mosley is down there alongside uh, the riders. Ali, how's the atmosphere building as we get well into this final now? Oh, Joe, it is exciting, and I'm with our youngest rider in the competition, Wyatt Young at Tamworth Local, a 22-year-old who was lucky first up. Wyatt. How are you going? Great. How did you feel out there? This Is is this your first final here at Willinga Park? Yeah, it is my first final. I uh, came down last one and, and uh, had a bit of luck there this year, and it's good, yeah. What would it mean to take out a $100,000 purse? Oh, it'd be unbelievable. It, um, you know, this is the, the largest prize pool dra camp draft in the country and, and uh, thanks to Willinga Park and everyone, it's, yeah, it's unbelievable. It, um, yeah, you dream of it. And you've obviously got a bright future. You're only 22. It's a, it's a big career for you ahead and we can't wait to see where you end up. We're off to a quick break here at Willinga Park.
Welcome back to our live coverage of the Volkswagen World Championship Gold Buckle Camp Draft. Our 13th rider of 27 contenders now in the camp. And what a moment it is for this hobby camp drafter, Susie Dynastis from Yarraman in Queensland on her little Bay Roan mare, Lily Roan. She had a great semi-final. She certainly did, and, and one of her big achievements last season, she took out the open camp drafting at Mundubra in uh, southeast Queensland, and she certainly looked to build on it. But uh, this horse is by Roney's Acres. You can see that Roan fleck through him that's part of the uh, breeding program, and uh, very, very competitive in the semi final. You, you would not know what to expect from this young lady. She was 88.3 in that semi, but uh, she's got plenty in the team. She's been a real revelation over the past couple of days, Susie Dynastis. Lovely to see her make the final. I saw her shortly before kickoff. She was pretty nervous, but uh, containing the nerves now for the cutout on this very talented mare. Well, I guess, it, you know, first time through to a final and you're competing for $100,000 in prize money, first prize alone. So uh, there's a little added pressure today. And she does this for fun. So to be competing in a final against the best in the business who do this professionally would be quite overwhelming for it's, a lot of riders. It certainly is. And uh, this little steer, he's a little sticky in the camp, as they may call it. But once uh, he sees that gate has, has physically been opened, it, it will be up to her to keep him on course. And she's called for the gate to be opened. They're out uh, on the arena now and travelling pretty well until uh, just now that beast uh, wanting to twist around and pull up a little bit and the judges have cracked her off. But uh, while she hasn't uh, completed the course, a great achievement for Susan. Well, it certainly is, and, it, and it's the experience of riding under pressure. You know, she, she comes out of this round with a, a camp score of 14, but that first uh, semi-final run of 88.3 this morning was very, very good. But one thing about the sport of camp drafting, you can be 95 in the first round and you can be cracked off in the camp in that next. But it's it's the way in which we all become realistic of the sport. It's a, it's a great relaxation and you learn to accept defeat. The sound of the stock whip is not a good sound uh, in camp drafting if you're out there in the arena. Next uh, rider up here is Gus Malone from Tumut in New South Wales. Yeah, well, Gus was fortunate enough to win the uh, novice camp drafting at his hometown camp draft back in 2020 on this same little horse. And the whip's gone there. He's been cracked off uh, Gus, but uh, credit to him uh, for making the final. He's pretty happy to be there. Well, he's still got that big smile on his face. It's an indication of, of the success just to make the top 27 here today at, at Willinga Park. Our next rider in the camp is uh, Julie Duff. This is competitor number 15 of 27 that have uh, made the cut for the final this year. And she's riding revving about this hat. Yeah, well, Julie Duff is a competitor that's won numerous Australian Lady Rider Competitions of the Year awards. She probably doesn't travel as much as she used to in years gone by, but uh, Julie, very, very experienced in the sport of camp drafting. She'll be cool. She's been under pressure. And just like Kimberly Salmon, she's mixed it with the best men in Australia. We look to our leaders board at this stage. Michael Hiscock still leads the overall competition with 181. We've got John Mulcahy with Guest and Acre, 178. Dean Rogers sits third with a 177.67, just ahead of Wyatt Young and Binya Millen. And the best positioned of the lady riders in the final at Kimberley Salmon at this point in time. Yes, and we're just past that halfway mark, Joe. And, uh, of course, the pressure will start to build on our leader at this point of time on 181. Let's have a look at Julie now in the camp. Uh, as we said, riding uh, the mare revving about this hat, uh, sired by a cat in a hat. Yeah, well, Julie uh, and, and a partner, of course, Joel, make their home in a little town called Manila on the north side of Tamworth, in the country music region. Uh, she's had some fantastic horses over her career and you can look at the way she's relaxed, she's calm, she's she's not getting overawed by the occasion. She's pretty calm in these situations and uh, certainly if she was to put a, some pressure on in this competition, it would not surprise me in any way, shape or form. So important, the beast that they pick out. 
It certainly is, Joe, and, and you can see that uh, Julie, she's calm, she's cool, and uh, hopefully she's picked a, a nice Hereford steer that's going to cooperate, get around that first peg, and, and once you set up for the rest of that run, and uh, it certainly builds on the competition. So far, so good as they go round the second peg successfully. Now it's on to the gate where they'll hopefully go through OK. Uh, it sounds easy to you and I, but oh boy, just anticipated that peg a little too soft. She may have just shifted a momentary early. She should have kept that steer running a little straighter out through towards that gate. And she knows she probably, it was pilot error on that occasion. Wonderful arena surface for the event uh, this year, Glenn, and you can see uh, the horses and riders and the cattle are, are really enjoying this surface, which is comprised of washed river sand, uh, set up by Wayne McDonald, uh, who is really passionate about his job here as the arena supervisor, fondly known around the grounds uh, as Macca. He has prepared a world-class surface for this year. He certainly has, and, and we've seen over 1,000 horses and and, and competitors so far this weekend and every hundred competitors he completely works that arena waters it rolls it rakes it and every competitor gets a pretty safe surface to compete on every uh, 10 rounds uh, throughout the competition over the past couple of days the surface has been rolled and uh, dragged and, and a lot of the riders the feedback has been that the surface has gone beyond expectations believe it or not 250 millimeters of rain fell here last week you wouldn't know it looking at the surface today. no you certainly wouldn't but uh, we watch on camp this time that was bill carey from gundawindi on new south wales border and he was writing his nomination called imprint came into this round of the competition with a score of 89.67 Next uh, rider in the camp, uh, once we have a look at this replay of Bill Carey, uh, is another one of the young guns of the sport, and that will be uh, Luke Bennett uh, up next, uh, riding a horse by the name of Stereo Cat. Uh, Luke from Dundee, the northern tablelands of New South Wales, and we're going to see his run right after this commercial break. Hi, my name is uh, Eric Lowy. I'm a veterinary surgeon at Willinga Park. So I uh, graduated uh, in the Netherlands at the University of Utrecht in 1998. I saw some practice as a student at the end of my studies and the practice I uh, visited in the UK offered me a job and sort of when I graduated I went straight to the UK to practice which um, was sort of specialised in reproduction or stud medicine which sort of probably incorporates a bit more than just sort of looking at mares so we saw a lot of uh, mares, fowls, stallions and all their related problems. That practice had a reciprocal arrangement with the practice in Australia. So my passion is reproduction but I've sort of also uh, spend a lot of time sort of dealing with falls, fall related problems, if it is confirmation or internal medicine. So sort of the surgical aspects of that sort of we spend we, we sort of build a lot of expertise with as well. Uh, the last uh, number of seasons we already did a little bit of work for Willinga Park and uh, fortunately sort of we were successful in delivering the results Willinga Park was after. I think we've built up a sort of a great uh, reputation in Warwick in, in sort of getting mares which have been difficult or in the past sort of haven't been delivering for owners sort of the result they were after. So sort of through the years we've sort of really uh, built on that sort of success we've managed to deliver to uh, all those clients. This year we uh, got quite a number of uh, mares from Relinga, but also from clients which had sort of very valuable mares which uh, Relinga invested in. I think we may be looking at uh, 15 or 16 mares. Some mares will go straight in foal, other mares will May try to attempt to get one embryo from and as some mares will maybe try to get multiple embryos from. I've been fortunate enough to sort of visit a lot of places sort of all over the world and uh, I think what's happening here is on a level that very few people can imagine and we're feeling very uh, fortunate to uh, be part of this.
Some say we've got engine oil in our veins. After all, it takes some rare skills to settle a wild yeet. And those that visit this place, well, well, they're transformed. Almost as much as the V6 Amarok's. You've got to see it to believe it. The only ute reared for the road. The biggest thing I think it's a, it's a family sport, you know, mum, dad, the kids can do it. It's a good environment, everyone gets on pretty well, you know, it's, and it's fun. Really good family sport, keeps the kids out of trouble and yeah, we've just always done it. Gave us something to do weekends. I love it, we've done it as a family, that's pretty much, oh yeah, I just hang out with these guys and I love it. You go away for a weekend, you take your whole family with you and that's, that's a big attraction with the sport too. My wife's here, she's competing this weekend, my daughter's competing in the ladies. Young girl that works for me is here competing. They're all here having to run the ladies. The two boys have been running around down there. They're dressed like cowboys. They're bloody mad on it. Mad camp drafting and cattle and horse and everything. So, yeah, it's, it's going back in the blood. It's, it's in them too. There's not too many other sports around that, you know, mum, dad, the kids, that everyone competes. And I would hate to mention any others. I don't know if there is one that everyone can have a go at the same time. You see two and three generations of family you know, they can't all go and play football or something on the same day, but they can go and load up and camp draft all in the one weekend and it's something the whole family can do together. You obviously love competing? Yeah, I love it, love the competition. It's not just a get on your horse and go thing, there's a lot of hours and if you want to be competitive, you've got to be dedicated. It takes a long time to, to get to where you are competitive in the sport when you're going against guys that have been doing it all their life. You know, you definitely bring the best you got, you're hopefully you're in with a chance. Yeah, like I say, you want to be the best, you've got to beat the best. So. Hi guys, I'm with Michael Hiscock from Mafra Victoria who is currently in the lead with his mare Tip Top here. Michael, how does it feel to be in the lead in a $100,000 competition? Well, the lead's, lead's unbelievable. That 100,000 100, is just a dream, but yeah, we've got a few good competitors to come, so we'll see what happens. You've got someone hot on your heels, I see. In the yard right now, so all the best to Luke. It's, uh, we're all pretty friendly and wish him all the best, but at the end of the day, it's the rider and the cow and the horse. That's what I've noticed about this sport is that you're all, there's the camaraderie between you all. Yes, yeah, um, the support we've had all through the week has been fantastic and you know, everyone's happy to see whoever wins, everyone's happy for them and that's why the sport's so great. What would it mean to take home that $100,000 cheque and gold buckle to Mafra? <laughs> It'd be fantastic, I think I'd get the uh, gold buckle and my wife who's a treasury, she'd take the 100 so... <laughs> I, I agree, so she should. Well, thank you very much and the best of luck. We we'll hope you can hold them off. Thanks, guys. He's very close to holding that $9,000 uh, belt buckle for the Wollinga Park uh, final well underway. Luke Bennett, the next rider in the camp. Uh, this uh, young talent uh, is a very gifted horseman. Uh, he's a professional horse breaker, uh, esteemed for being great with young horses. Well, he comes into this event with that magnificent score of 90.67 and things probably not just going as you would have planned. It's it's a tough steer, it's a challenging steer and uh, he's going to have to work extremely hard to keep this steer on course. You can see that it ducks left, it ducks right. It's uh, becoming a, a real tough steer, but he's self-navigated that first peg and, and now hopefully he can set him up for that second. Luke's dad was a bull rider, Glenn. Uh, Luke grew up around horses and cattle, worked as a ringer when he left school uh, and then headed off to Canada to work. Uh, not his day today, though, in the final. Uh, cracked off there. Uh, 
that steer giving him all sorts of headaches. And that's one thing about the sport, you know, he'll he'll learn from that, he'll grow from it, he'll he'll just understand next year that added pressure that comes with competing in a big event like this. But it, it's certainly uh, tough on, on, on the young man, but Stereo Cattle bounce back. He's already won some major events this year, including the, the Glen Innes Show draft. He also took out first at Bandara, their big events last season. And, and I'm certain that we'll see a lot more of Luke Bennett in the years to come. Having a great season on that horse. Sixth also at the Paradise Lagoons Open Draft this year. But Luke, uh, previously a Gold Cup finalist. We'll see him riding in finals here in years to come, I'm sure. Next rider in the camp is one of the biggest names in the sport. A brother of Peter, a two-time winner. Steve Kamiski here from Capella in Queensland. Well, it's a familiar name that we see in the finals, the Comiskey family, and uh, I can assure you, Peter would be cheering him on just as uh, hard as anyone in this final. He's not far off the pace. He sits in this event with an 89.3, and, uh, you know, it's it's only going to take another similar performance to be right amongst the leaders in this competition. It's a... Riding Lyra Park Sigma here, uh, which is owned by Steve and his wife, Louise. He's won many numerous open drafts on the competition. He also took out the Grass Hut Championship at Twin Hills, the restricted open draft. It's disappointing, but you see that uh, split peg on that occasion, you know, just inside, and our judges all see it the same. Three whips crack pretty much at the same time, unfortunately, for Steve in this round of the competition. So he leaves the arena uh, without being able to uh, complete the course. Uh, the rank uh, he finishes on uh, currently 13 with a total score of 110.67. As he leaves uh, the arena, uh, next in the camp we have Troy Palmer. Here's some background on one of the icons of the sport. So I've been camp drafting since I was about eight years old, and I've been doing it for sort of 40 odd years. Well, I've done a lot of driving. I uh, did a lot of driving with Dad when I was a young fella, and it was just your everyday work. If we had to go and shift the mob of cattle, everything was done on horseback. You worked your horses during the week, you done your work on them, and then you went camp drafting on the weekend. So it sort of tied it all in. The sport originated here in Australia. It's Australia's own horse sport. We we invented camp drafting, and it's got the potential to be to go worldwide. The good people make it look easy. I've heard people say, oh yeah, that's not that hard, it looks easy to do and all that. And I've had people say that and I've had guys that could ride a bit and say, all right, I'll come along and have a go and they have a bit of a go and shake their head a bit. It's not as, not as easy as it looks and you've got to have a good horse and you've got to be able to pick a good cow and everything's got to sort of click on the day. And like any other sport, you only get out of it what you put in it. If you don't work your horses and don't put the hard hours in during the week, don't expect to come there on the weekend and, and win because it just it won't happen like that anymore. Like it's gone to a new level now, and, and with what Terry's done down here with Willinga Park, and it's just taken it to another level again. To me, this is this is the best event in camp drafting here. No other horse event in Australia, that are like outside of racing, that pays a hundred thousand dollars to win. All the top competitors are down here vying for the hundred thousand dollars, and that's taking it to another level. The best of the best are here. He sure is one of the best of the best and we've seen that result in him having three horses qualify for this prestigious final. This is his second ride here, Binia Impressive Destiny. Well, this horse is uh, certainly an icon in our sport of camp drafting Australia wide. He's been a seven times ABCRA Horse of the Year winner. Uh, he has got the greatest nature. He's bred by that famous black stallion by Acres Destiny. Um, and of course, Troy is certainly not far off the leaders with 89 in that first round. And boy, he has drawn a good steer. Now, this is a free running steer. He's not holding back. And you can feel this, the crowd in the background. They're feeling what we can see here. There's, it's going to take a very good score to be up there. Seven times horse of the year. Can he do it? Look at this, Joe. That is absolutely brilliant. That is what you call poetry uh, in motion uh, out there in the arena. A beautiful run from Troy Palmer. The thing I like, look at this horse, Joe. That is a natural Australian stock horse. Uh, 
by Acres Destiny, but look at the way he's here. He's a prick. He walks like he loves what he does, and that's why we're in this equine discipline. One of the most important sires in Australian stock horse history, uh, Acres Destiny. He has four horses uh, in this final today. Well, look, the scores have come through. He's now moved up to second place outright, 179.67. And that he has bumped John Mulcahy into third position now in this final, and he's with Ali mostly. Yes, I'm with John now. John, you've just gone into third position. Troy Palmer's just <laughs> bumped you down, but how are you feeling about it? Oh, very excited. It's been a, uh, a great event. The, the whole three days have been fantastic, and it's just to be riding in the final is, is a great thrill. And you've got a wonderful stallion here, your 14-year-old stallion. They've got the most fantastic natures, these horses. Yes, they have. He's a pure quarter horse. And um, we cross him over our um, Australian stock horse mares. And, and uh, yeah, his progeny has good, really good minds. And, and a, a good mind is very important in a, a camp draft horse. All right, well, thanks, John. And best of luck. We are off to a quick break here. You've lost him, Gary. Another one sold on the Amarok V6. Hard not to be with three years free scheduled servicing across the Amarok V6 range. Would you look at that grin? I hope he runs half petrol. It's diesel. Shut it. Get some Volkswagen end of financial year satisfaction with the Amarok V6 Auto from 49990 Drive Away. White's nice. I'm Ash Ma. Whether it's cam drafting or cutting, there's an extreme amount of pressure on both horse and rider. But nothing compares to the pressure on your horse's joints. That's why I only trust and ride with Foresight Epitalis Fort. It's scientifically proven to provide unrivaled protection of your horse's joints, naturally, keeping Magical at the top of his game. That's why the elite in the equine industry, whether it be competitor or veterinarian, always choose Foresight Epitalis Fort. Truly underway here for the Volkswagen World Championship Gold Buckle Camp Draft. Here's how the standings are currently ranked in position one. Michael Hiscock uh, has held the lead for a while now on Mewburn Tip Top with Troy Palmer in second placing on Binia Impressive Destiny. 
Well, it certainly uh, is a congested leaders board. We go to number three, of course, John Mulcahy. We uh, move right down the list, but those top three, four competitors, all within about one and a half points separating. And, and when you look at the winner's check at nearly 100,000, that's where you want to be at that top end of the uh, competition. And still some big names to come. Uh, most interesting to see how uh, this back half of the final plays out. Next rider in the camp is Peter Bolton, riding Nandi Reflex. Yeah, Peter joins us all the way from Hayfield in Victoria. He qualified in the semi-final this morning with an 88.67. Like he's only two or three points off the, off the top of the lead at this stage. So... Any one of these finalists with a, a near-perfect run can pick up that lead, but, uh, boy, he's going to have to work overtime. A strong-willed steer that he selected, and, uh, of course, good work, good horsemanship. He get that steer blocked, and now he's uh, proceed out through the gate, out through the camp, and uh, we'll take that left-hand peg first. And he's positioned well. These steers, they're strong running Hereford. They're very, very good once you get them out around that first peg. He's crossed over nicely. You can see that horse work, and his hands are so smooth and soft that the horse pretty much knows its job ahead of him. He's crossed over. He's navigated the first two pegs. This gate, as we've said, this is where you can really clinch that title and the competition, but he's done it. He's certainly achieved the full course. Nardi I reflex. Luckily, too, because uh, that steer was really starting to slow up on him as they approached the gate. It certainly was, and, and they've got that time limit, of course, but uh, he's exceeded that. He's he's made through to the uh, competition, and now we'll wait for that judge's score to come through. It was a cutout score of 15.3, so that's a little disappointing. The steer did beat him back from the front of the gate. He did achieve the fourth course, 62 for horsework, gives him an overall 170, ranks him at number 11. Troy Palmer is currently sitting in second position. Uh, we saw him a couple of runs ago aboard Binia Impressive Destiny and he's with Ali now. Joe, and he's got one more ride to come aboard Shakira, who he, of course, won Sydney Royal on a very, very flashy horse. Troy, do you think you can bump yourself up an extra spot? Oh, I'm going to be trying, mate. Um, yeah, the, the venue and the cattle and everything else is sort of just a great day to be here and uh, ground's perfect and, yeah, I'm going to try my hardest. So I tried on my last run and just fell a bit short, so I'll try a bit harder this time, I guess. How do you think she, Shakira will go? Yeah, she goes the same as she always goes. She gives 110% every time. She's a she's a little Palomino mare. She's a um, Barbie doll mare, but she's got a very big heart. She always tries also, for me. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget. We all love the Barbie dolls, and best of luck, Troy, in your last run. Let's see if you can take it out. Over Thanks, here, Darn. We'll see how we go. <laughs> and she's a mare that's been living up to her flashy looks. Uh, Jabel Shakir has been one of the best performing uh, camp draft horses on the circuit uh, this season, uh, taking all before her. Next in the camp, we have Ben McNaughton, son of Bruce. Yeah, I mentioned it early in the call. It's a, a father and son that qualified in this final this year. And, of course, his son, Ben, very, a very accomplished contestant. And uh, what a well-bred horse that he rides in this this competition don't underestimate this guy he's a hard riding competitor he comes from a family of success and I know everyone on this ground would love nothing more to see Ben McNaughton really clinch this title he comes into the event with an 89.3 and of course uh, this horse is by that famous Hazelwood con man from the whole family up there in Gundawindi He's going for broke uh, here Ben a superb run so far he's just got to get through that gate Steer has just probably turned a little early and of course this is going to make it difficult for him. It's been a very, very strong first and second peg and of course uh, that whistle and time has expired. Unfortunately a little short of luck here this afternoon for Ben McNaughton from Walker in northern New South Wales. And this is a sport in which you need plenty of luck. Oh you certainly do and, and the one thing about camp drafting and, and these men and women learn from an early age no matter what happens, you learn to accept defeat. You learn to accept that things don't always go to perf. Because when you're dealing with livestock and cattle, you can never predict the outcome. It, it, it can change any day at any time. The cattle overall have been very consistent for the riders? Oh, they certainly have. 1,500 Herefords, well-bred, uh, well-conditioned and well-prepared for the final. And, and nothing has changed all weekend. 
Simon Dodwell about to uh, perform his cutout here on Kaylee Park Pearl. Yeah, well, he's certainly uh, a newcomer to the final this weekend. He'd certainly, uh, it's good to see new faces that we haven't seen before, like whilst we see the Mark Butsworth, Pete Comiskeys, the Troy Palmers year in and year out. Every time we see the final here at Willinga, there's one or two new faces. It, it's probably a lifetime experience for these people competing on the big stage. And of course, um, I know that uh, he would be doing everything he possibly can to uh, ensure the best with this little horse. He came into the final with his first round in the semi of 87 points. It's gone back to the mob. So he's got his work cut out here a bit. Yeah, well, that's that's certainly going to make it difficult as far as the camp scores go. The judges here today will be right on to that point that they will deduct, you know, considerable points in that camp for losing that steer back. And he's been cracked off, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but a big occasion for Simon to uh, make the final, and I'm sure both he and his horse will benefit greatly from this experience oh, on the big cer stage. Certainly will, Joe. And, of course... Um, you know, same thing, they, they pull up, they, they realise their time in the sun is over here and all of that uh, hype and that opportunity has slipped on by for 2021. But uh, I know Simon will probably go home, they'll work hard for the next 12 months and nothing more to try and see him back here for that uh, final again next year. Ali Mosley a short time ago uh, caught up with this rider, uh, Troy Palmer, who rides uh, the beautiful Palomino mare, Jabel Shakira Spin, a daughter of Seligman Spin, uh, a top performing mare owned by Jane and Malcolm Kennedy, who purchased her back in 2013. She was recently named Horse of the Year at the Scone Horse Festival. Yeah, well, this is that great little mare by Seligman Spin. Uh, Troy recently won the, the biggest camp after the Sydney Royal Easter Show over six nights, and uh, he had some 30,000 people cheering for him at the big Royal Easter Show there back in April. And, of course, uh, she hasn't missed a beat here over the last few rounds. She'll stay on track. Look at the way she just eases back, takes that position, and look at this. It's a replica of what she did in Sydney. She did six nights of that in Sydney, three or four rounds here in, in Wellinga Park and look at that, a beautiful horse well prepared and, and ridden to perfection by the master in Troy Palmer She's really developed a cult following uh, that run, very popular uh, with the big crowd here at uh, Wellinga Park uh, perfection there, pushing Troy uh, up to third position at uh, Jabel Shakira spin with a total score of 178.67 Only a few more riders to go here in the final. We'll be back to see how it unfolds after this break.
The final of the Volkswagen World Championship Gold Buckle Camp draft is well underway. Michael Hiscock maintaining the lead with a score of 181.33. We've got our 24th horse and rider combination in the camp at the moment. That's Troy Palmer, or Mark Butsworth rather, on Branch Vale Exile. Uh, about to go here. Mark, one of the legends of the sport. Uh, Self-made man. He started off uh, with horses with $100 in savings and bought the neighbour's unbroken colt. And from that horse bred an open draft winner called uh, Firefly. Uh, from a mare he bred uh, out of that stallion. So uh, he's come the long journey through the sport, Mark Buttsworth, and he finds himself here today with three representatives in the final. Well, he's certainly one of Australia's elite, and we've seen it here before. We've seen it at the biggest drafts in the nation, but unfortunately, like it can happen to the best, and one of the great equalisers in camp drafting are the livestock and cattle, and, and just the selection of that steer was probably just a little strong, a little strong-willed, a little hard-running, and, of course, just ducked inside that uh, first peg, or, or to the outside for that matter, and just couldn't get the control, get the eye to the beast, and, and get him bent in time, unfortunately. Mark and his wisdom uh, talks about the importance of the relationship between horse and cow and the ability of the rider to really read cattle. Uh, and that's what defines the elite riders from the rest, uh, that unique ability to be able to read uh, these animals. Uh, and one rider that can certainly do that is Hugh Miles. Uh, I reckon I started when I was about 14 or 15 sort of pretty serious about it and then turn into a passion turn into a business and yeah that's all we do being able to read cattle and work cattle and doing all that stuff every day like we do definitely helps the horses that see cattle all the time it's a big benefit to them you know they learn to read cattle too and and how to work cattle properly and you know when you can pick a cow and your horse and everything comes together it's there's a fair few um variables that have got to work but when it does it that's what makes it so rewarding you got to be very very level-headed and not let little things affect you and be very composed you know and learn to put the the bad stuff that might have previously happened behind you and look forward and block that out and treat every run as if it's 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 the first one of the day you'll be very sound minded otherwise it'll it'll cook you i love the horses and you know i love training them but it's also good that that brings everyone together and they're all good people and you know we're all good mates but when you come here it's good to just catch up with everyone the last few years it's the money and the stuff that's got into it is it's just taken it to another level and events like this is just has has helped that facilities are second to none every little detail is thought of it's competitive friendly uh they you know every year terry strong is improving things for um for us all he's just trying to do everything to make it better for the competitors and putting more money up and making the facility work better so that it's, it, it is the best and biggest event for sure. So, number 25. Hugh Miles there, uh, our next rider in the camp as the current leader, Michael Hiscock, uh, sits up on the rail having a well-earned Great Northern. Is he celebrating too early? Well, I guess he's, he, he may be just relaxing, I think. It's certainly been a tough week and I guess you've got two to go. The worst he can be is third in the competition and that's still a pretty handy check at this stage. Well, Hugh Miles uh, about to go here on Torelli Treasured Acres. Yeah, well, this little horse was sired. Uh, Alan Young's got a stallion called Liberty Bow, and, of course, that horse uh, pr produced so many very good uh, camp drafting horses over the years, and I think, you know, Hugh's done an amazing job with this little horse. He's very athletic. He's sharp in the camp. As we saw in the semi-final, he was a 90-point score, so... It's one of the horses that could certainly put some pressure on our leaders in this competition. And, you know, from what we've seen in that camp so far, he hasn't dropped any points at this stage. And look at this, he's tight on that first peg. He, he's lost nothing at this stage. If this steer continues to run f free and fluent, uh, Huey Miles said about not letting things get to you, not the pressures, you know, not letting any niggling problems come back to haunt you. And he's just got to keep this steer on track. He's... Uh, trying to duck inside that gate but oh as luck may have it well, that's a little disappointing joe for hugh moles's last run in our final yeah it was looking uh, good for hugh uh, for the early part uh, of that run uh, nice cut out uh, around uh, the pegs there well but uh, couldn't find the gate on torelli treasured acres uh, ranked 15 here with a total score of 112.67 yeah, I think, uh, you know, 
Hugh explained in his interview there moments before competing about, you know, the sport of camp drafting, how you need to stay composed, you know, whilst things may not go perfect one day, you, you don't reflect on that the next. You bounce out of bed, you, you start before the sun comes up and, you know, you prepare for the next weekend soon as that whip cracks. Just the two riders to go in this final. Michael Hiscock maintaining the lead. How important is the draw, in your opinion, Glenn, for these last few riders? Is there more pressure on them? Well, there, there probably is, but the one thing that we've noticed this week, more than anything, you can be late in the draw and still come out with a 90-point score. We saw it in the semi-finals. We saw it in the go-rounds. The cattle have been so even... Uh, it certainly hasn't played a big part in some camp drafts at will, but the cattle here this weekend have been very consistent. And, you know, we're right through to our second last competitor and still the cattle are working well in the camp. And this is Jay Charnock uh, from Bulladilla in New South Wales riding Hollywood Pepto. And unfortunately, he has not been able to complete the course, but still all smiles, happy to be there on this magnificent day of competition. Well, it is, and it's, it's Jay's first time here to Willinga, his first time in the final. Um, a lot of these people will go back, and we saw the entries this year exceed all expectations. We had last year cancelled through COVID. Um, you know, it was a variable that, you know, people didn't understand how many people would come back to the competition, but uh, it's certainly good to see 450 nominations this year. Indeed it is. We've got one rider to go, Ben McNaughton. He's coming up after the break. Hi, my name is uh, Eric Lowy. I'm a veterinary surgeon at Willinga Park. So I uh, graduated uh, in the Netherlands at the University of Utrecht in 1998. I saw some practice as a student at the end of my studies and the practice I uh, visited in the UK offered me a job and sort of when I graduated I went straight to the UK to practice which um, was sort of specialised in reproduction or stud medicine which sort of probably incorporates a bit more than just sort of looking at mares so we saw a lot of uh, mares, fowls, stallions and all their related problems. That practice had a reciprocal arrangement with the practice in Australia. So my passion is reproduction but I've sort of also uh, spent a lot of time sort of dealing with falls, fall related problems, if it is confirmation or internal medicine. So sort of the surgical aspects of that sort of we spend we, we sort of build a lot of expertise with as well. Uh, the last uh, number of seasons we already did a little bit of work for Willinga Park and uh, fortunately sort of we were successful in delivering the results Willinga Park was after. I think we've built up a sort of a great uh, reputation in Warwick in, in sort of getting mares which have been difficult or in the past sort of haven't been delivering for owners sort of the result they were after. So sort of through the years we've sort of really uh, built on that sort of success. We've managed to deliver to uh, all those clients. This year we uh, got quite a number of uh, mares from Relinga, but also from clients which had sort of very valuable mares which uh, Relinga invested in. I think we may be looking at uh, 15 or 16 mares. Some mares will go straight in fall, other mares will May try to attempt to get one embryo from and as some mares will maybe try to get multiple embryos from. I've been fortunate enough to sort of visit a lot of places sort of all over the world and uh, I think what's happening here is on a level that uh, very few people can imagine and we're feeling very uh, fortunate to uh, be part of this. Some say we've got engine oil in our veins. After all, it takes some rare skills to settle a wild ute. And those that visit this place, well, well, they're transformed. Almost as much as the V6 Amarok's. You've got to see it to believe it. The only ute reared for the road.
G'day, I'm Josh Gibson, and after years of playing elite sport, I understand more than most the value of protecting my joints. I treat my dogs like I treat my body. Unfortunately, they can't tell me when they're in pain. That's why I use the scientifically proven natural product, Foresight Epitalis Fort. It just takes the guesswork out. I use the product recommended by vets across Australia to protect my dog's joints. Foresight Epitalis Fort. Sitting pretty under the beautiful blue autumn skies, our current leader is Michael Hiscock. He was the sixth rider out in the final and he's held the lead ever since. We only have the one rider to go, that's Ben McNaughton in the camp now, and he's on tiptoe. Well, Ben is certainly a very well-credentialed competitor and rider in our sport. You know, he's a previous winner of the big landmark classic draft there in Tamworth at the Country Music City. He was a runner-up in the Condamine Bell, but unfortunately here today, yeah, we hear those whips cracking and, and look at the jubilation to our winner here today and, and you know, one of the first to congratulate him, Mark Buttsworth. Of course, what a win. $100,000 first prize money uh, this man will take home to Mafra in Victoria where he's a dairy farmer and uh, he's the champion rider for this year here at Wollinga Park in the Volkswagen World Championship Gold Buckle Camp Draft. Uh, superb uh, horsemanship shown by Michael today. Uh, he's been the dominant force in this final. Well he has and, and the good thing is he proved that in the semi-finals this morning. He led from sunrise at, at early this morning. He's here on the course at 6 a.m. He's marked a 91 points in that semi-final, backed it up in front of the big crowd, and, of course, you know, the pressure didn't get to him. But, you know, let me tell you a little bit about Michael Hiscock. He's won the uh, big championship at Warwick. He's won it at Willinga. He's won all the majors in Australia. Let's look, you know, from one right through to four, very few points between a Michael Hiscock with 181. Troy Palmer, what a weekend from Kula. 179.67, been your impressive destiny. That's his fa favourite stadium. And of course, that, that great little Palomino mare that you love so much, Joe, uh, sits in third place with 178.67. And John Mulcahy finishing in uh, fourth position there on just an acre. Dean Rogers up there this year on Archie. Fifth, Troy Palmer uh, getting uh, of his three runners. Fifth there with Hells a coming uh, at one of his top camp drafting uh, Mount Kimberly Salmon, the best placed of the female riders on Juliet's Romeo. Wyatt Young uh, there was also prominent in the top 10, uh, a young rider of the future. Well, we're going to see some people, you know, Wyatt Young and people like that come back and grow from the experience. They're going to build from it. And of course, you know, it's good to see those young and new faces in our sport because uh, they're the future. They're going to be around for a long, long time. They certainly are. All the big names uh, have been here in the final today, but uh, taking home the famous belt buckle, Michael Hiscock, who's now with Ali. He certainly is. And what a joy to be going home to Mafra with that $100,000 check. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's great. <laughs> um, it's, only, it's a dream. Like We talk about it, but <clears throat> you don't expect to win it. But it's uh, absolutely fantastic. Did you think on the long drive up here that you might be in the final, let alone the winner today? Uh, our goal to leave with the competition is if we can make a final, we're really, really happy because the competitors are so good. We know the environment will be great. So if we can make the last round, we're always really happy. So, But to compete and be at the, end of the, at the top of the end, it's fantastic. And it took me a while to get to you because there were too many people congratulating you and giving you hugs and everything like yeah. that. It's a, And I said to someone before, it really is a sport of camaraderie. You're all in it together and yeah. it's 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 fantastic. Yeah, like we'll pick one another's cattle and, um, you know, if there's a good cow in the yard and you see it, you'll give it to your fellow competitor. Like, But it's about having a cow when you get there and, you know, doing the best you can and leave it up to the judges and see what happens with the next competitor when he comes in. And a pretty special horse too, anything to say on Tip Top? <laughs> uh, <laughs> she's been a favourite um, the whole time. <laughs> she went to Warwick, oh, sorry, as a four-year-old and went really well. Um, just 
Sorry. It's, I, it, it, it shows the connection that you have with your horse and how important yeah. they are in this. Yeah, well, it's a team. Um, it's you, um, your horse, and then your selection. And, um, you know, they'll try for you. This mare tries every time. Thanks so much. And thanks, Joe. We'll head back to you. Wonderful to see the raw emotion there from our winner, Michael Hiscock. Uh, ask a man about a horse and you really pull the heartstrings there. Uh, he's very proud uh, of uh, his horse, Tiptoe, uh, and will go home. Uh, it'll be a, a short feeling trip back to uh, Victoria uh, as he wipes away the tears. Uh, great scenes here at Wollonga Park at the conclusion of the World Championship Gold Buckle Camp Drive.